Hi, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. We are going to do the Silver Jubilee Daydream Block of the Month from Annie's Kits. And this is block five, <laughs> to make sure. And this is what it looks like. Now they send all the fabric that you need. It's not cut up into little pieces, but it is enough fabric to cut the pieces that you need and some extra. And I'm also getting some extra fabric in here that I believe is for the sashing because it's these colors and there's a lot of fabric in here. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a lot of fabric to end up with one block. And they're 16 by 16, but you know, this is just a lot, of, a lot of fabric. So we're going to cut it out and build the block. First thing I do is I go to my little zipper pouches and I have one for each project that I'm working on, specifically the blocks of the month projects. And this is where I keep the past patterns as well as any leftover pieces for each individual block, which I label. And like in this case, there wasn't a lot of big pieces left, but there are, there's actually quite a bit of fabric in this little bag for just having done five blocks. This is what's left over. Now, some of this, like this, I think is the sashing. I, these are the colors and there's a lot of it and I'm thinking it's for the sashing. There's definitely extra fabric. Extra fabric in here, I'm okay with that. So this right here happens to be a half of a yard. It's doubled. Okay, and I do need this fabric, but they've sent me this and this and this, all quarter yards or fat quarters. And here's that fabric again. So pretty sure that other one goes for um, sashing or something else. And then here's the fourth fabric. So let's follow the instructions and cut it up. I'm going to put this in my pouch.
Okay, now I need to square these guys up individually. Trim unit to four and a half, keeping the seam centered. I don't have a four and a half inch ruler, but I do have the six and a half and a five and a half, and I can work with that. But this happens to be four and a half on the inside of this ruler. And I also have the corner marks right here to keep it centered. So it's kind of doing it backwards, but it is a four and a half inch square. Haven't used this one much. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a trick that I'm just not familiar with. Keeping that centered, it said. There we go. I don't like this. It's worth trying, seeing if I can do it, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother. We're going to do this. So the four and a half inch mark is right here. So going from this side of the ruler over to the four and a half is four and a half, and then where they intersect. So let's see. There we go. confused. Okay, so there's the four and a half. There's the four and a half. Putting the points on the corners. Same thing here. We are lining up on the ruler. It's the only thing we care about, which is why I don't really care about what's going on below. All right. <laughs> I have to do that with the others. So here's the four and a half line right here. Here it is here, lining them up. The crosshairs right here is the bottom of the square. And when I do that, this is all the extra. And that is how you use this type of a ruler when you don't have the exact sides. And then we'll turn around, do the same thing. Half, half crosshairs. I don't think there's anything there. <laughs> there. All right, we did it.
All right, I want to show you something. My blocks are not square. I'm just not doing very well with my half square triangles. And so I'm lining this up so the edge is on the four and a half, and this one is on the four and a half. I gotta move that over. I am not worried about the crosshairs down here because I still need to, to rotate it. And obviously, my block is on an angle. But if you start with this and this, preferably, if you can get the um, seam in your corner, that's what you need so that your seams are coming from the corner. So there's not much to trim on this side. It's not the case on the other side. Four and a half. Now on this one, I should be able to do the crosshairs because I just squared up that side. So, oh, let's get the right, right one. Here we go. Oh, column's still off. Ah. Get that in the corner. Square the rest of these blocks up, and then it's just a matter of laying them out, sewing them together. This is it for block five. This is what it looks like. A lot of my points are not right, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with my machine and I still have not perfected this technique. So I am happy with how it turned out. I know it's not perfect. I just know it's a learning process for me. So this is, this is how it is. And it's 16 and a half by 16 and a half when it's all said and done. I'm not gonna square anything up until I get all my blocks together and that way if I have to wiggle, make some wiggle room due to margins or seam allowances or anything, 
I have all the blocks in the same situation. So I will square that up later, but this is my finished block five. And all of my pieces, did you see that? I got this from the ginger quilter. <laughs> and it was sitting here. And evidently it wanted to come down. Can you see that? All right, okay. Anyway, so all my pieces in the pattern have gone in the bag for block five and it's going in the big, the big bag to hold everything together until it's time to assemble it. So this is done for now. It's getting fat. There's only five blocks out of 12. I might end up with more than one bag. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, that's it. Tell me what you think. If anyone else is doing this, I'd love to hear. And uh, there will be more blocks coming each month. There'll be more. So keep your eye open for those. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.